And this was something when we were, again, when we were having lunch a couple days ago, we were talking about this. Um, and you said, do you remember um, th this whole idea that, that we have about Christianity's steady march forward idea? Uh, but do, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, explain what you mean by that phrase. Well, a lot of our historical consciousness, uh, I'm speaking as a Western, as an Anabaptist, and as a young person, um, we, we don't have a very rich historical uh, background to our thinking about missions. And so for us, sometimes we think of, of missions as being born with William Carey, Hudson Taylor, you know, wonderful uh, figures of, of the faith, by the way. But, uh, and so we see it advancing first to China, first to India, then to China, and throughout Africa. And it's a steady march forward in which the gospel gradually overcomes all obstacles. And at the end, you know, every tribe and nation has been evangelized. The, the, the reality is that in some of these places, such as China, the gospel was there a long time ago. Mm. And so we, we do tend to forget the contributions of the churches of the past. We also tend to forget that um, faith can be lost, mm. churches can decline and uh, come to a point where they're no longer vibrant and, and no longer effective. Mm. And um, this is part of our story too. And so when I look at the decline of the churches in the Middle East and elsewhere in the world, um, you know, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to um, assign blame or to, to an analyze that except to, to realize maybe that sometimes we do tend to measure success in rather earthly terms, even as the mm -hmm. church. You know, we have Christian uh, well, we're as Americans, we we look at our, you know, Christian founding founding principles and so on, and we feel that uh, our nation has been friendly to Christianity and so on. The fact is that maybe identifying too closely with the with the external markers of success, we have so many churches, so many people, and so on. Mm. Maybe that's a mistake. Maybe we shouldn't even make counting noses and counting churches our goal. Maybe we should make it our goal to be faithful to, to Christ. Mm -hmm. it, it matters how many people come to know him. That, that matters. Sure. But, but faithfulness and, um, and remembering not to get caught up in, in the, uh, the allure of the powers of this world. Yeah. I, do, I do really find in this story a sort of a warning for me, not not that I know exactly what went down and how they, mm -hmm. why things happened the way they did. But for me, I went, I take it as a warning not to embrace an identity with a, an earthly kingdom or a, even an an ethnic uh, identity too closely. The gospel is is beyond all that, and it probably probably will come back to bite us if we uh, if we wave the American flag. Um, as Christians too, too much and identify too much with, with a, an earthly force because the thing about earthly kingdoms, they win and then they lose and um, they're certainly not a safe place to trust in. That's a really great point because you can imagine the, some of these churches in the East, you know, way back in the day, say, feeling very established, like we've been here for a very long time. This is incredible. It's growing. It's you know, getting well established. And now we look at those places. You mentioned Afghanistan earlier, you know, as a place where there was a lot of, I guess a lot, it depends on how you define all this, but there was there definitely- There was a thriving church. I don't know. Yeah, there was a church there, yeah. right? You know, so who knows how, how many, sure, all of that. But we cannot say that today. Yeah, <laughs> That is right. definitely not the case um, in the same way, at least, you know, in that particular country of China, some of these other re regions, Turkmenistan, um, where really- this is one of the things we don't like to talk about maybe as much. Instead of the steady march forward, that was a slow falling, like de de a decline, you know, in the church, you know, in, in these places. And that's really sad, you yeah. know. And I'm not entirely sure what to do with that. It's kind of painful. At the risk of of, uh, of trying to do an end run around that issue, you mentioned China. Of course, there's a thriving church in China today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um that's not directly related to the efforts of those early, um, mm. the, of the Eastern Church, the Syriac speaking missionaries that came there. So there are, there are resurgences, there's hope, um, some of which we haven't seen yet um, in some of these regions. 
But certainly, isn't it isn't it appropriate with some of these stories to weep with those who weep? Just acknowledge mm. that. Um, I, I was just reading one of the Syriac authors this morning, and he was talking about how we should live together as as though our concerns are one, and saying, you know, wow. if somebody sins, we should we should work together. We should consider our own problem. You know, if 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 a brother in the church gets angry. Um, that that's my problem, and we should mm. consider it. And so, I, I even historically, can we look at it that way? Like the Church of the East, the the Syrian Orthodox Church, we should weep with them for their losses. And if if some mm. of it has, if they haven't perfectly followed Christ at times, that's we're not denouncing them. We're 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 considering them in a sense our brothers, and we weep with them. Mm. Uh, that's 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 not a resolution, but it, it's something I think about.